Today I'm gonna make something I've never made before, which is a soup can rocket stove. Good day, hola, and onion haseo. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts. And the soup can rocket stove is probably the simplest form of rocket stove out there, and maybe even the easiest and cheapest to make. I have made a couple of gasifying stoves with soup cans, but I never have tried the rocket stove. So I've got several sizes of salvaged cans. My goal is to nest this can inside the larger can and then have this can coming in from the side. Then I fill the space in between these two cans with some perlite. That will help insulate the riser and allow it to send more heat vertically versus radiating out through the sides. That should make this a little bit more efficient. Eyes and ears, JW. When I'm making a project that's already pretty common here on YouTube, I usually like to try and do something a little bit different. Try something to make it better or more efficient. So this can is gonna pass through both of these cans. But I'm gonna have the inner can sit up off the bottom a little bit so I can get some perlite underneath it as well for insulation on the bottom there. I gotta figure that and how my two cans connect here. But I also like the tops of these two cans to be even. Something I get a lot of grief for in the comments, and rightfully so, is this. Not protecting my feet. <laughs> now that I'm gonna be doing a season of fire and metal, it's high time to start protecting my feet. A few months ago, Ben Facetti over at Brunt reached out to me and offered me some boots. What was really refreshing is I didn't have any expectations. I didn't have to do anything. And given that I do need to protect my feet better, certainly when I'm using a cutoff wheel, I thought today's video would be a good chance to give these a try. Ben, thanks a lot. All right, JW, I got the toes covered. It's nice having the Dremel to do this fine work. The cutoff wheel on that starts out at this size as compared to the four and a half inch disc. Definitely can do some more fine detail work with that. Suppose if you used a, a cutoff disc that's already worn down a little bit, you might be able to get the, the radius you need for something like that. Of course, these smaller cutoff discs do wear down more quickly. And actually use the disc to screw in the screw. Just pulling it out this way, putting a little pressure on it, and then the, the grit just holds onto that screw head. This locks the spindle. I can just tighten it up by hand. So I think instead of cutting this off all the way, I'm going to cut it off this way. And then bend that tab over to make a foot on the front edge. I'm gonna leave it longer to start because I'm not sure exactly how long that foot's gonna to need to be. Train's here. So my tab will need to be this tall to compensate for that rise there on the big can. I'm gonna score this a little bit to make it easier to bend. Or at least to bend where I want it to. I'm gonna widen the sides of that hole just a little bit. I'm 
All right, it's in. I need to even out my gap here. All right, I am happy with this. A little foot there. All right, now I need to divide the fire tunnel here into two by putting in a floor. The bottom level will be for air to move in underneath the fire, and then the top half will be for the fuel. To do that, I'm gonna use another can that I'm gonna cut up and flatten. I'm gonna go ahead and use my full-size Ryobi grinder to make quick work of this. I'm gonna cut in some notches here into the can to allow the floor to slide in. I'm gonna cut this with some tabs here and here that'll sit outside the notches. Train's here. I'm gonna bend over that front edge and hammer it down just to give that a little more rigidity on the front. It would have been nice if it was straight, but it shouldn't affect anything. This is a little flimsy and it's gonna take a good bit of the heat. If you had some sheet metal on hand that were a little thicker or a thicker can, I'd use that instead. But because I can take this in and out quite easily, it's also easy for me to replace it. All right, now it's time to add my perlite. I'm gonna get my dust mask on for that. Perlite's not something you want on your lungs. It's actually volcanic glass. I'm gonna tape the lid back in so I can avoid sending a ton of that stuff down the, into the center. I didn't succeed in getting the tops of my cans to line up, but that'll be all right. I'm gonna use some pot standoffs Perlite is the white stuff that you see in potting soil. It makes air gaps, but then also absorbs water, which is why they say it improves drainage and aerates potting soil. In this case, holding air is gonna add insulation to the riser. I'm gonna start by putting in a little bit and getting it underneath the bottom of that can as best as I can. Perlite's really light and fluffy. Almost looks like styrofoam pellets, but it's not. I'm actually going to pour a little bit of this out because I want a little bit of a gap there at the top that I'm going to seal as I'm packing this in. I'm making sure that my inner can is centered. The perlite crunches together nicely and kind of packs in. 
almost feels like wet snow in a way, making snowballs. I'm gonna fill that little gap with some castable refractory cement that will seal off the top there, lock in that perlite. It also can handle the heat. While I'm adding the refractory, I'm gonna put in some nails for pot standoffs. I'm doing three nails because the three-legged stool never wobbles. Might not be 100% level, but it's gonna not wiggle. I've got a little extra refractory. This isn't necessary, but I'm gonna drop it into the bottom of the can. That will help the floor down there last longer. Open up the aperture here so you can see what's going on down there. All right, that's as smooth as it needs to be. In addition to being heat resistant, this refractory cement is also paintable once it's cured. And for that, it's gonna need 24 hours. All right, the stove has cured overnight, and I'm gonna give it a light sanding ahead of hitting it with some high heat ultra. I'm not looking for a perfect finish here. This is obviously more about utility. So I can use this on my tabletop here. I'm gonna put a block of air creep underneath it to protect the table. Because I'm using small sticks and twigs, it's gonna burn really fast. So I wanna have all my fuel gathered and processed before I light it. I also don't think this is enough. I'm gonna add some used chopsticks as fuel as well. And some dryer lint to get it started. I'm gonna drop some small stuff down in the riser, help get the draft going. Not to waste a good fire, I'm gonna be boiling four eggs here in my camp pot. This could easily be lit with a match, but I'm gonna use my torch. Good contact with the bottom of the pot. Gotta keep this fire fed.
it doesn't take much of a fire to get that nice rolling boil especially when you're directing it right at the bottom of the pot I pulled out all the small stuff because I really need to be using the bigger stuff now anyway I'll save this for my next burn trains here the pot has pushed the nails down in a little bit so if I were to do this again I think I'd put a thicker layer of the cement there at the top and you could also use Portland cement for that you don't have to do the refractory I think it would be just fine it's certainly cheaper still got plenty of fuel left too that points to the efficiency of this rocket stove Look at that. As I near the end of this boil, I'm just going to let this burn out. Been boiling for five minutes or so. Now I'm going to let it rest for five minutes. This thing can rip it up. Very little smoke. I'm happy with how this thing turned out. Super efficient. I do think adding that perlite made a big difference and directing more heat to the bottom of the pot, which means a more efficient burn, a faster boil, and ultimately using less fuel. And that's what makes a rocket stove efficient. Using small sticks and twigs, which is in fact carbon neutral because they've been made from a recent atmosphere. It's also an attrition fuel, so a tree didn't die to make this fuel. The one main thing I need to fix on this stove is the pot standoffs. The nails are not standing up with that perlite base below them. So perhaps a little more cement in the top there uh, would resolve that problem. Definitely burns fast. Gotta keep this fire fed. But feeding the fire is part of the joy of making a fire. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I appreciate the vote of confidence and your support. Keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. I really do appreciate that as well. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. I saved a ton of money by making this rocket stove using salvaged cans. And a rocket stove is green because it uses found fuel and burns it efficiently. I'm gonna have some fun using this one. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Saturday.